Have you decided it's time to add a canine to your family dynamics, but you're unsure on what breed to get? Well, in today's video, we're gonna be comparing the differences between the Pomeranian and the Malinois. Welcome back to the Fenrir Pomeranian Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you become a high-level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload of the Fenrir Pomeranian Show. So let's dive in and start with the history of both of these canines. The Pomeranian, as we know them, take their name from the region of Pomerania, which is a small historical area off the coast of the Baltic Sea between Poland and Germany. While we're unclear on the timeline of the modern Pomeranian, we do know that there was a surge in their popularity during the reign of Queen Victoria. The exact origins of the various breeds that played a part in the creation of the Pomeranian are unknown. What we do know is that the little feisty dogs that we know today have ancestors that were large sled spitz type dogs from Russia, Siberia and other Arctic regions. Queen Victoria bred many different dogs during her time on the throne, but she was particularly fond of the Pomeranian. They were also said to be popular in mainland Europe, but the Queen actively promoted them throughout the United Kingdom. Before the end of her reign, the first Pomeranian club was established in 1891. Their popularity grew, especially amongst the socialites of the time. They've remained a popular choice of breed ever since. Their small stature, cute expression and loyal, affectionate nature make them a fantastic choice of companion dog for both the young and the elderly. The Belgian Malinois, as the name suggests, originated in Belgium. They're one of four varieties of Belgian sheepdog that were developed in the late 19th century. The modern day Malinois can be traced back to this time and more specifically to a breeding pair owned by a Belgian shepherd named Adrian Janssens. In 1885, he purchased a rough haired fawn dog called Vos that he used to herd flock, but also bred with a short haired brindle brown dog named Lise. After this initial mating, Vos was bred with his daughters to further establish the line of grey rough haired and short haired Malinois and fawn rough haired and short haired Malinois. Today, Vos and Lise are recognised as the ancestors of all modern Belgian shepherd dogs, as well as the Bouvier and the Dutch Shepherd. Breeders decided to give each variety of Belgian Shepherd their own names. A breeder named Louis Hugues Barrett had done a lot to popularise the fawn short-haired Malinois in the city of Malaine. The Malinois' name was adopted from this city to refer to the fawn short-haired Belgian Shepherd. Hugie Barrett recognised that there was a lack of sheep in Belgium towards the end of the 1800s and turned to showcasing the Malinois' intelligence, obedience and loyalty. Because of this, they were used in the early 20th century as guard dogs and draft dogs. They were also first bred to be used by the Belgian police. During the First World War, they had many roles in the military, including messenger dogs, Red Cross dogs, ambulance cart dogs and even light machine gun cart dogs. After the First World War, many American servicemen brought back Malinois and other Belgian Shepherd dogs. The first Belgian Shepherd Club of America was formed in 1924 and they were officially recognised by the American Kennel Club shortly after. Pomeranians are a small breed with a short back and compact bodies that has been described as giving them a barrel look. Their looks have also been compared to that of a fox because of their large head and finely chiseled muzzle. The Pomeranian breed has over 20 different colour combinations. Their nose colour usually matches their coat but their eye rims are black. They have a double coat made up of a long, flat outer coat that's harsh to the touch and in contrast to their soft and fluffy undercoat. They're also known for having tails that are set high and curl up over their backs. Their tails are covered in long hair. They really are one of the smallest breeds around, only standing up to a height of 12 inches or 30 centimetres at the withers and weighing up to 7 pounds or 3 kilograms. The Pomeranian should be brushed 3-4 to four times a week with a slicker brush to ensure their coat stays clean and tangle free. The Belgian Malinois is a medium sized Belgian Shepherd that is often confused with the German Shepherd. They are a short haired fawn coloured dog with a black mask. Males will grow up to a height of 26 inches or 66 centimetres at the withers and weigh up to 75 pounds or 34 kilograms. Females are a little bit smaller with a maximum height of 24 inches or 61 centimetres and weighing up to 60 pounds or 27 kilograms. Their coats are short and straight and their fur is particularly short around the heads, ears and lower legs. They do have slightly long hair around the neck forming a collar but not so long that it stands out. They're a double coated breed that generally shed twice a year. They'll need brushing at least twice a week to keep their coats healthy and to encourage new growth. The Pomeranian is an extremely loyal small dog and would suit someone who's used to dogs of this nature. They're known to form a very 
very strong bond with only one person in the household. This does not always make them a great choice of families. Pomeranians are tiny in stature but have masses of personality and they're extroverts. They're happy with a short amount of exercise each day and around 30 minutes should be sufficient. They're incredibly intelligent and know exactly how to get their own way with owners if not trained properly from an early age. Pomeranians are very quick to learn new things, both good and bad. If you allow them to get their own way, they'll show you a more stubborn and dominant side of their personality and they'll be a lot more difficult to handle. As with all breeds, early socialisation is key. Pomeranians have no idea how small they really are. Their feisty nature means they'll happily attempt to confront much larger dogs than themselves. Training needs to be firm and consistent, and their intelligent nature makes them easy to train, but they will challenge you. By being firm yet fair, they will soon understand their place in the pecking order. The Malinois is an intelligent and active breed that truly thrives in many tasks. They have a great deal of stamina and enjoy working, which makes them a great breed for police work, search and rescue, and performance events like agility. They're also a sensitive breed and don't respond well to harsher training methods. Due to this combination of high energy and sensitivity, they're not recommended for first-time owners and instead for those experienced with dog training. They love everyone to be included in family activities, so they're not well suited to homes where the family's out every day at school or work. They're quick learners and are eager to please. As we've already touched upon, they thrive at dog sports, but they also love to play. They've been described as having a higher play drive, as almost everything you ask them to do is like play to them. You should address this desire to play through exercise. They're a very high energy breed and you should try to aim for at least 90 minutes of exercise each day, which is best split into three 30 minute sessions. It's not just physical exercise they need, but also mental stimulation. Try and incorporate this as part of a variety of games and exercises like runs, walks, hikes, fetch, games of hide and seek, puzzle games and snuffle mats. Without mental and physical exercise, Malinois can become destructive and show behaviours like barking, chewing, anxious pacing, going to the toilet in the house and general destructive behaviour. So be sure you can dedicate plenty of time to exercise when choosing a Malinois because a tired dog's a happy dog. As we've already touched upon, Pomeranians typically cling to one member of the household. They can become mouthy if they've not been trained properly and in manners and obedience. So they wouldn't be recommended for families with smaller children. If you do have small children, it's vital you keep interactions with between your children and your Pomeranian supervised. They're an outgoing and alert breed and have a naturally strong desire to protect. Although they form a close bond with one person of the house, they do still have a bond with others and this encourages their need to be protective. They'll get along well with other dogs if they've been well socialised in puppyhood, however their protective nature can sometimes lead to showing levels of aggression towards their other dogs occasionally. This can also be made worse if your Pomeranian has been treated as a baby or spoil as they'll think they're in charge. This is why it's important to teach your canine that you are the leader. With proper socialisation and training in manners and obedience, you should have a canine that's a pleasure to be around and is polite when meeting new dogs and people. Well socialised Malinois make good family companions. They're great with children, especially if they've been raised around them. It's important to remember that they have strong herding heritage, so this can sometimes lead to them to nipping at children's feet and heels during playtime. An adult Malinois who's not familiar with children would be better suited to a home with older children who are mature enough to know how to properly interact with dogs. This is worth thinking about if you're thinking of adopting or rescuing an older dog. You should always teach young children how to approach and touch your Malinois and supervise any interactions between them to prevent bad behaviour from either side. Malinois can become aggressive towards other dogs and cats unless they've been raised alongside them. If you want them to get along well with other dogs and animals, it's important to start socialisation early. Ensure you use positive reinforcement and reward appropriate behaviour. The breed does have a naturally high prey drive and natural hunting instincts, which can make them challenging with other small domestic pets. This isn't to be said that they cannot get along well with them if they've been socialised and raised alongside them. However, they should never be left unsupervised as accidents can happen. If you are a family that have small children, then the Malinois may be a better option for the family setting. The Pomeranian is loving and loyal and protective, but if you don't show them that you're the leader, they can become difficult. Both canines are very different to each other. They're different in size, appearance and grooming needs. Both breeds need the right owner that can give them the correct care and attention. It's important to choose a breed that suits you and your family's needs. The Pomeranian and the Malinois will be the perfect canine companion for the right family that suit their needs. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and get involved down in the comment section below. And don't forget if you are new here to make sure you subscribe. We have three dedicated Pomeranian videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Pomeranian Show.